I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the foundation. Okay, so now let's talk about how Divi started, right? We actually had a great conversation with our engineer to be able to go through all those steps. And it is a complicated thing, but in fact, it is also very reflective of all the industry. We'll be talking about lack of resource, uh, the quality of the code base, the fact that multiple people interact. So we can talk about how, how it works in blockchain and maybe open source projects in general. So, Voice, maybe you're very familiar with. Can I just interject one thing? I'm sorry, because I find sure. this, I find this hilarious. So, Divi raised two mil two million dollars, as I recall. Two point six, I think. Okay, yeah. two point six. Even if I said twenty, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, but two, two point six, and and you said this is like indicative of the of the blockchain industry. But I keep remembering like EOS four. What was it? Was it really four billion? Billion dollars? It was. It was a bazillion. Yeah, but it's one in a thousand. No, right? no. I mean, during that time frame, yeah. you either died, and and closed your ICO, or you had a twenty year, thirty year, forty year, fifty year, a billion dollar ICO. In fact, if you look at the ranks, the ICO ranks, two point five is among the top hundred at that time. Oh, uh, you, sure. If you mean, if you look at, at a histogram of all the, I'm just saying, yeah, and you're right. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. It, it, it is indicative of most of the industry. But at the time, uh, there are these multi-billion dollar projects that are literally, literally nothing right now. Like literally <laughs> unbelievable. <course>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Um, yeah. But yeah, so you're right. So yeah, most of the of the industry was like Divi, but it's just during that time, there were these overpowering, well-funded projects that really <laughs> didn't produce much. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. So it was more to talk about like the more common projects, right? Um, yeah. Actually, Divi did actually pretty good, but uh, at this time, there was also... Like this is also something we can talk about that is very common in all blockchain projects, is that the history of DV is full of bumps, right? So some of the founders disappeared very early. Some of the founders disappeared very early. Jeff actually helped the project go through the first bear market, which happened just a few months after, after the release. Those 2.5 million are actually not really what the project had, especially that a lot of it had been collected on Ethereum. And again, this is something you will see in almost all the crypto projects. If you don't have key people, uh, then projects die. That, that's how many projects in crypto die. And that's how we, we did survive. Yep. So to get into the technicals, um, basically we have our blockchain engineer who has been at the head of all those changes since, the, since almost the beginning. So he's random string. So random string has been here since I think almost five years. Yeah. And when he, when he found the blockchain, the DV blockchain, it was basically in the state that all the blockchains are today. It suffers the, the same weaknesses. It was suffering the same weaknesses as most of the open source projects have a lot of people that are contributing to one thing. And then you don't really have one person thinking about the architecture, thinking about all those things would work together. Things are most likely strapped together and it is a lot harder to understand how they work. And one of the first goal that our engineers set was that he wanted this code to be understandable by a novice developer. Correct. He wanted the code to be you clear. Remember the, reason, the reason for that is because, you know, there's Bitcoin, like not all coins, but almost all of them, uh, you know, are forks or distant forks of forks of forks of, of Bitcoin. Uh, ours in particular is, is a, a chain from Bitcoin to Dash to Pivx. And then to us, and all their projects forked along, forked off along that same path that we took. And, you know, Random Street once said to me, you know, he, uh, Satoshi was brilliant, uh, but not necessarily the best. Well, he coder. wasn't. So that's <laughs> the difference is that, that uh, I'll digress just a little bit. When you have an open source project and you invite people in to work on that project, that developer, that coder picks the one thing that they're focused on whatever's bugging them whatever's stuck and so then they fix that something or they build that something they take no concern for all the other codes surrounding it 
And then their concern is to make sure their feature and function works. But when you think about code, especially open source code, which is still good, or any kind of code in a company, if you have 10,000 people touching your code or 200 people touching your code, there's different philosophies for that code. There, there's just different That's ways right. of doing it, and it becomes a mess after a while, even if it functions, it becomes untenable or unmanageable or maybe not even understandable from a code base perspective. It functions, but there's no way to fix it, upgrade it, or repair it until you really clean it all up. Yeah, and they, I mean, I, I'm not, I code, but I'm not a coder. Nobody pays me to code anything. Um, but what I do look at even good code and I can read it, but even then, even when it's relatively good, it takes me a very long time to go through it and understand what, what's doing what, especially if it's gone through more than one coder. Like you don't, there's no person to go and ask, what is this? So we have, we're four forks in, Band-aids, things didn't work, but there's, you know, their vestigial organs basically <laughs> are still inside the code. Um, and that's what random string was up against. And he has a, he has a certain kind of ethic where what goes into the random string is definitely not what comes out of the random string. Like he, he wants to <laughs> take those materials and produce, you know, something that is organized that works together. It doesn't have a uh, compute pointed at things that aren't necessary like all of that stuff so and he it was just happened to be the perfect person to get right. the divi Correct. code base i would agree we talk about the mindset behind the ad, the advancement that um random streak changes but just to for people to understand because i think this is something that that's counterintuitive is that bitcoin and most of the blockchain code uh, that you can find in the industry um, initially, it was a proof of concept. It was not intended to be a release level. And the thing is that things went forward. And as you can see, many other projects, even if they're not inherited from Bitcoin directly, it is a rush. And the quality of the code, the expandability of the code is never a priority in those models. DV was no different when uh, our engineers started to work on it. As Rob was mentioning uh, just before, he was really the proper person to, to get us where we are today uh, because really his vision was strong in the quality of the code, uh, understanding what it does and being able to use it for other purpose. And we'll also see that with the invention that he came with in the next section. Yeah, so that's what he kind of, and so you gotta imagine he, he comes in, he looks at the code, you know, wants to vomit, <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, yeah. spent years making one of the best code bases in this entire industry. It's not, and what's, what's, what really sucks is that, that that's not sexy. Like, that's not, I can say that sure. statement with confidence. Um, but, you know, it doesn't, you know, it, it's not pretty, you can't see it on the outside. It doesn't have a nice pattern. You know, <laughs> there's all these attributes to things that we find cool that are just simply not watching code. Correct. Uh, unless you are an engineer and you want to have to go work on that code, which is what we want. We want, we want people working on the code. Um, so that was basically what he did and, and he fixed it all. And in the fixing, you, now you can see the engine and you can see the transmission and you can see like, you can see these different parts. And now knowing the different parts, you can be smart about what you do next. Um, and that's really what, he, what I think that's what he really brought to this. The, the, our entire There's articles that. that if you haven't read that are in the blog that kind of details this. And there are some imagery that is shared in those articles at the divyproject.org blog. And I think that there was uh, three, was there three articles total, correct? Um, the, yeah, the three yeah, articles. If you have not read those, just look at that first article and then think, Every other blockchain is that first article, nearly, not all of them. Some of them have started from scratch and really had a focus when they did it. But everybody who's been around for a decade or even less kind of is that first article. And they're all going through those changes. Some of them had to refactor. Some of them had to update, including Bitcoin, by the way, um, make those changes. But that's what made 
random string so strong is he started so early on detailing everything, taking everything out and looking at it and then putting it back cleaner than what it was before. Um, read those articles. It's, it's helped us to get where we are today to make the, the magnificent, fantastic, almost unimaginable things that are coming for tomorrow possible. Yeah.